Okay, today we're going to have a look at Azure Backup Solutions and Azure Recovery Services Vaults. We will take an existing virtual machine inside our Azure portal and back it up into Azure itself. We will also take an on-site virtual machine, download and install the Mars agent and back up some files from that machine into our Azure Recovery Services Vault. We will also finally look at actually how to pull that information back down and how to actually restore those files to our machines. So starting off here with the demo, we can see I have an existing resource group and in this existing resource group, I actually have a number of things. Uh, I have a couple of virtual machines, a VM0 and a VM1. And these are what I'm going to use to actually back up my resources. So first things first, we need to create something. Uh, in this case, we need to create a recovery services vault. So let's go to recovery services vaults and let's go and create one. The process is very quick and very easy in here. So I'm going to select my existing resource group and I'm going to name this vault uh, something very simple. In fact, I'm just going to name it AZ104 Demo. We're going to deploy this to the East US and we will just review and create this recovery services vault. And that's it. It is literally that simple to create a recovery services vault in Azure. Let's continue on once this is built and we will actually set this up and connect our virtual machine to our recovery services vault to back up. All right, so now my recovery services vault is created. We can actually start to do a couple of bits and bobs here or a bit of configuration. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to come down inside my recovery services vault and I want to drop into the property section of it. And here within the properties section, I might want to set a couple of options. One of the things I might want to do is set the encryption settings here. And if I want to, I can use my own key. But remember, if you use your own key, if you lose it, you're not getting that data back. So be very cautious about that one. The second thing I might want to actually do here on my backup configuration is I can set up whether this backup is going to be geo redundant or zone redundant or locally redundant. The higher the level of redundancy we get, the more costly this is actually going to be. And we can also enable or disable cross regional restores from here should we want to move our virtual machines from one location to another. Another element we want to take a quick look at here is looking down at security settings because our security settings have our option here for our soft delete retention period which by default is set to 14 days remember that means that our azure backups if we delete them are not actually deleted until 14 days has passed microsoft hold on to those for us just in case we make a mistake so just check that's turned on or maybe even increase that soft delete if we want some extra protection now what I want to do is I want to go and create a backup. So let's drop into the backup section and I want to back up a virtual machine. Notice we can back up VMs, file share, SQL servers or SAP HANA workloads. We can also back these up not just from Azure. Uh, we can also do this from the Azure Stack Hub or HCI if we've got on-site private cloud or even our on-premises solutions if we've got Hyper-V or VMware running on-prem. We can also back up bare metal here uh, with this service. But we're going to stick to a simple process here for backing up a virtual machine that exists in the cloud. So our backup policy is set to default policy. We can create our own, but all that a backup policy is, is the frequency, how often this thing is actually going to back up and how much of a retention we actually need here. Um, to store. So I'm going to stick that with the default policy. That's fine. Daily at 1 uh, 1 30 a.m. UTC. We can also do an enhanced backup. If we do an enhanced backup, this supports trusted Azure VMs. It costs a little more to run and trusted Azure virtual machines are the virtual machines that are in the cloud that not even Microsoft have access to. They, are, uh, they look like an encrypted blob to Microsoft solutions and only you can access the data that's inside those VMs. I'm going to add some virtual machines in here and I'm going to go and find my virtual machine within this list. 
So selecting that virtual machine in the list of all the available virtual machines, it's going to do a little bit of validation. What we can choose to do now is we can back up the virtual machine and all the disks that are attached to it, or we can choose to actually only back up just the operating system disk only. If we create and enable this backup, that's it. That's a backup doing uh, a backup completing at 1.30 a.m. every day uh, for recovery services vaults in Azure. Very, very simple, very, very easy. So let's go and have a look at some more things that we can actually do with this service. So now what we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at backing up files from another server. So I'm here on a virtual machine called VM1 and within here I'm going to jump back into that same recovery services vault we were playing with before that we backed up that entire virtual machine on. Uh, and within here we're going to go back to backup and we are actually going to select something slightly different. We're going to select on-premises. This is simulating an on-premises server and we're given options for a number of things. I'm only going to back up here a file and folder, but I could choose to back up the system state or even do a complete bare metal recovery. To do this, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to download an agent and actually register the server. The agent is called the Mars agent, the Microsoft Azure Recovery Services agent, and I can open this thing up and actually install it. It's just a very, very simple extraction, a very, very simple installation. There isn't really any options down here. So let's wait for that to actually go through and install. We can set our inst installation folder and our cache location. We'll leave all these as defaults. We don't have a proxy server and we'll use Microsoft Update uh, when it's checking for updates. So let's get that installed. Hey guys, me again. Okay, button right down there, like and subscribe. Even the pineapple, the pineapple tells you to like and subscribe right down here. Yeah, some people have a rubber duck for talking to when they need to solve problems. I have a pineapple. Um, hmm. Like and subscribe anyway, button down there with the, uh, with the bell icon. Okay, on with the video. Yeah, on with the video. Now that's actually installed, I can proceed to registration. Now to register this system, I'm going to need some vault credentials. I can download those vault credentials here from step two of the prepare infrastructure section. These are just a single file called .vault credentials. If we open those up and actually have a look at that with um, notepad, you'll just see it's a set of hexadecimal data inside there with a bunch of URLs. It's just a key. Um, it's actually an XML file, sorry. So I can bring up the recovery services vault and load that in. So if I go to my downloads, grab those vault credentials in, and that will take this server and register it against that recovery services vault so I can start uploading things to Azure and backing things up to Azure, in this case, files and folders. What I also have down here on this computer is I also have some files and folders that I'm going to be using to back up in a moment. So on my desktop, I have a file called a folder called stuff. And inside that stuff, I have some files that I want to back up. So coming back here, backups are encrypted to protect the confidentiality of your data. What we need to do is enter a passphrase with a minimum of 16 characters. We can also generate our own passphrases if we really want to and actually find a location to save that. So I'll just drop this directly onto the desktop. It won't be too much of a problem. I really need to make sure to back up that passphrase or to not actually forget it because that's going to be used later on to recover information. So that's now registering the server with Azure Backup. This might take a couple of minutes. Just be patient. All right. So now our Azure Backup agent is registered and it's ready to rock. Uh, what we can actually do is we can go and schedule a backup on here. And if we schedule a backup, it will ask me specifically what I want to back up and when I want to back up. If this looks familiar to you, that's because there's a reason this is essentially Windows Server Backup, just repurposed. So let's go and add some items in here. What do I want to back up? I actually want to back up that folder that is just sitting on my desktop. So let's go into desktop here and let's go and grab that stuff folder. That's all I want, very quick and easy. I want to back it up every day at 10 p.m. Wonderful, click next on that. And we can also set our weekly, monthly and yearly retention policies here. The same thing that we get in the Azure portal. We're going to transfer this over the network or if we have a huge backup, we can actually start to do deltas after we do an offline transfer of the initial backup. So we can use things like Azure Databox disks to do initial transfers of huge databases or huge data sets. Since this is only a couple of text files, I think it'll be fine over the internet. So that's all done. 
we can click backup now if we want to initiate a backup for us um, or we can wait until our assigned backup time and that's it this is taking a snapshot of the volume this is initiating a backup and this is me kicking it to say go and backup now that's all it's doing so our backup job is done, it's completed, we can close this down and we can pop back over to our recovery services vault. And if we drop into this recovery services vault now and we go and have a look at backup items, hopefully we should be able to see our Azure virtual machine, which we backed up before from Azure, nicely uh, passed on its integrity check, but it's still waiting for its initial backup. And secondly, we've actually got this backup from the Azure backup agent that has come in, um, and this is actually uh, backing up now. It might take a minute to pop up in here, but once it does, we'll be able to see the details of this and be able to see the details of the files within there. So should we want to recover data after we backed it up, we can do that here within the, the Microsoft um, backup solution or Microsoft Azure backup if we click recover data uh, we can recover data for this server or any other servers that we've backed up and we can choose to not just recover volumes and system states but we can pull individual files or folders it is a simple backup solution let's go and select C let's mount that previous point and what this is actually going to do is it doesn't actually present you with a list of files but what it does is it actually mounts um, a file share for us um, that actually mounts a copy or a snapshotted copy of the disk that it actually backed up. Um, so that's why it says mounting recovery volume. Uh, it does take a quite a long time to do this as well. So give it some time and eventually we should be able to see our recovery volume is mounted here at volume F and we can browse that. And within this volume F, this is actually my backed up stuff information here. Um, we can see that on this PC and it's mounted as a unique GUID. Now, what's interesting about that is the way it's done it. Um, if you come and have a look at this iSCSI initiator, this is actually how it's built it. It's created an iSCSI connection that is actually going, um, if we go in here, where are we? iSCSI targets, go into the properties of that. And this iSCSI target here is actually going directly over the internet to get to that Azure Recovery Services Vault and mount that directory here as a secondary drive. So that kind of concludes looking at Azure backup solutions and how very simple they actually are for you. We backed up an Azure virtual machine to Azure itself and we also did a file recovery solution too. Admittedly, in the real world, there will be much more complex and much more detailed solutions where you will have much more data. But this is all that we're going to need for the Azure AZ 104 course and to get started with the Microsoft Azure Backup Solutions. Also, please bear in mind that if you are going to deploy an, a backup solution in Azure on your live environments, this is not the be all and end all of backup solutions in Azure. There are lots and lots of third parties. If we go in here and have a look at backup, and we go to, for example, the marketplace and see all. Let's try that again. If we type in backup, go to the marketplace and see all, you will see not just the Microsoft solutions, there's things from Veeam, from Acronis, from Commvault. Um, everybody who you might need is actually going to be in here. There's 36 pages of backup providers in here. Um, in the real world, if you're using something like Veeam, keep using Veeam and it will work perfectly fine within Azure as a solution to store that information in the cloud. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.